Developing this hour, the former president of Brazil has been admitted to the hospital for abdominal pain, according to his wife. It comes as here in Washington. You've got the vice president, Kamala Harris, in just about 35 minutes or so, expected to swear in the new U.S. ambassador to Brazil any minute. All eyes on what, if anything, she says about the violent and extraordinary attack on the Brazilian government and how the administration plans to respond. In Brazil, you've got the capital now occupied by federal forces. A regional governor suspended, hundreds of people arrested after what you see on your screen here, the storming of government buildings on Sunday by Bolsonaro supporters, capping months of far-right protests over false election conspiracy theories. Sound familiar? It did to President Biden, who's condemning this January 6th-style attack in a joint statement with the leaders of Mexico and Canada. It's possible he could face pressure to do more, with lawmakers today calling on President Biden to extradite Bolsonaro back to Brazil. The former president's believed to be in Florida on a special visa reserved for heads of state. Joining us now is NBC's Mike Memoli, who is traveling with the president in Mexico. Guad Venegas is joining us in Miami. And, Mike, there are some threads here, right, linking the U.S. to what's going on in Brazil. You have Bolsonaro, believed to be, like, outside Orlando, essentially. The influence of far-right figures that we know domestically, people like Steve Bannon, et cetera, on politics in Brazil. Give us the White House view on what we should expect to see as this moves forward. Well, Hal, you have some discrete issues in the here and now, especially involving this visa issue, potential extradition that the White House is, for the most part, uh, at least putting these questions off. For instance, Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, telling reporters here in Mexico City earlier today that he expects that President Biden will speak with President Lula, that the U.S. stands ready uh, to do whatever it can to help uh, President Lula and, sh uh, so, you know, shore up democratic institutions. They said they believe those democratic institutions in Brazil remain strong. We heard at just in the last hour from the State Department briefing, a confirmation that, yes, President, uh, former President Bolsonaro is here in the U.S. on that special visa reserved for heads of government, and that, as they laid it out, there's a process in place for individuals who come here with one visa uh, having about 30 days, for instance, uh, to request uh, either a different immigration status or to leave the country. So those are some of the more sort of granular issues that the White House will have to confront. But I think if you step back, this is an administration, as you know, Hallie, that's really focused focused very significantly. We saw just on Friday about these threats to democracy at home and abroad. The president has really guided his foreign policy about autocracies versus democracies and the importance of shoring up democracies around the world. It's important to note, too, that the White House was watching this Brazilian election very closely in the last year, both the initial election and then that runoff. President Biden placed a call very quickly uh, to President-elect Lula at the time. Uh, shortly after the results came in, he sent a delegation to Brasilia just in the last week to attend his inauguration. And a decade ago, when Biden was vice president, he traveled to Brazil multiple times, including meeting with Lula the last time he was president. So this is a relationship the White House has been particularly focused on, and you can expect that focus to continue here. I thought it was notable, Hallie, that we saw not just a statement from the president on the situation there, but a, a statement from the three leaders who will be gathering here for this North American Leader Summit, the Mexican president as well as the Canadian prime minister. Mike Mamaly live for us there, traveling with the president. Guad, let me go to you. No word yet on the conversation between President Biden and President Lula, whether that's scheduled, whether it's happened, um, et cetera. Talk about where the investigation in Brasilia goes from here. Uh, Halley, well, uh, President Lula da Silva has informed that this investigation is underway. As the military has regained control of the capital, uh, the Minister of Justice spoke uh, just about an hour ago, gave more details as to what happened, how the protesters were able to enter these buildings, the presidential palace, Congress, and, of course, the Supreme Court uh, building. So it's going to take some time to, for them to find out. Now, uh, Lula da Silva has also indicated that there could be financiers behind uh, the individuals that arrived in this area. There's also been reports from reporters on the ground that buses uh, were used to bus some of these protesters. So, of course, all of that is underway. And it's very important, as Mike was mentioning, to see the support that's coming from international leaders. We saw President Biden, Andres Manuel López Obrador, and Justin Trudeau in Mexico sending this uh, joint statement. Uh, and also from around the world, the Secretary of the U.N., the President of France, and other leaders have shown their support for Lula da Silva very important as he goes on the first days of his presidency. He's only been the president for a few days when this happened. So it's very important for Brazil to move forward with the investigation and the full support from the international community. We will see more details being revealed as they continue making detentions. We know that as of last night, uh, local authorities there said they had about 400 people arrested. Today, we know that more than 1,000 have been detained, and the military continues to uh, still detain others 
after the Supreme Court ordered the military to disband any protest happening around the country supporting uh, Bolsonaro, Hallie.